The one-legged conference, or one-legged interview, is a change intervention used informally to monitor a teacher's concerns and progress in putting an innovation into practice. You're about to see Linda, an instructional facilitator from the district office, conduct one-legged interviews with four classroom teachers. In the next two scenarios, Linda uses the interview technique to determine Robert and Sue's stages of concern about a new inquiry-oriented science curriculum. Hi, Robert. Oh, hi, Linda. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Well, I'm sort of busy right now. I need to get this lab set up before the bell rings, but I'm doing all right. Looks like you're working on the new science program. Yes, I am. This is sort of taking up a lot of my time right now. Every day there's a lot of preparations for all the activities for each of the program, and I'm sure glad I've got this planning period to get ready for the next class. I wanted to ask you a few questions about the science program. Sure. Are you having any problems with it? Well, I don't know as I'd call them problems as such, but it sure takes a lot of time to get ready for everybody. Because you see, I've got students at all different levels. Some of them are still on the first unit and just trying to finish up. And I've got some other kids that are moving away ahead. Some of them are on the velocity of moving objects with different angles to it. And it's just really hard keeping up with everything and where everybody is in the program. How do you feel about the process content element? Well, that's just what I'm talking about in a way. It just seems as if the process is important, and I understand that. But some of the content is getting lost because there just isn't as much time for it. And I'm having trouble individualizing the instruction because each of the students is moving at a different pace. I see. Would it be easier for you if you worked with the kids in small groups instead of doing all individualized planning? Can I do that? Of course, you could do that. I think your goal in the end would be to get the kids working in an individualized fashion. But to start off with, sure, you could use small groups. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. I think that would help because, you see, I've got 24 kids in each class, and each one of them is at a different point. And if I could get them clustered together, say three or four in a group, I think that would help a little bit. Yeah, what we'd like to do is get you used to the program and then kind of refine it, you know, work on the fine details. Well, if it's all right, I'd like to try that. I think it would help out. Yeah, I'll come back in a couple of days and we'll see how that's going. All right, good. Hi, Sue. Hi, Linda. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just doing some catch-up work here. I thought I'd come by and talk to you a little bit about the uh, new science program. Have you heard about it? Yeah, the new science program, right. Have you tried it in your classroom? I don't know anything about it, and from what I hear from the other teachers, they're having a lot of trouble with it. You didn't get a chance to go to the uh, workshop they had at the end of the summer? No. When I returned, everything was in full swing, and I just really fell out of the loop. And so I thought what I'm doing in science seems to be working, so, mm -hmm. you know, I like it, and the students seem to be learning what they need, and that's fine. Well, what do you know about the program, or how do you feel about it? Um, do you think it's a good program? I really don't know that much about it. I know it's here, and the district wants to keep it, but I haven't had a chance to talk to the other teachers about that or anything else. I just know that they're having a lot of trouble the other teachers? Yeah. I mean, why should I set myself up for a lot of trouble? Yeah. Well, the program was adopted by the district because it had such good outcomes for students in other districts. Um, and we felt that if we tried the program in our district, that we might be able to raise the achievement scores in science and math. You know, they've been slipping in the last few years. Sure. So that was our rationale for using the new program. Sure. Uh, would you like some information about that, or could I tell you a little bit more about it? Would you be open to that? Well, um, are they going to have any more of those workshops that I missed or anything else? Oh, yeah. We're going to be having a review workshop coming up in about two weeks. Um, and I can make sure that you get contacted about that. I'd really appreciate that. Believe me, if you have any questions, please feel free to call. I'd be happy to come and help you with the materials. It is complicated enough to try to get started that... You mean you would come right into my classroom? Sure, if you want me to. Wow. If you want, I can walk through the material with you and get you started on that, and then we can build from there step by step. That'd be great. Okay, I'll certainly get that uh, workshop information to you. Well, thanks. Okay.
In the following scenarios, Linda interviews Jorge and Terry to determine the innovation configuration of a new writing curriculum. I was talking to some of the people down at the district office who have been working on this writing for competency program. And we decided it might be a good idea to go around and talk to some of the teachers who are using the program. That way we can actually see what you're doing and find out if you need any help. And we might learn from the teachers whether there needs to be some improvements. Uh, we may need to do some fine tuning. Okay. I'll share with you what I can. Thanks, Jorge. Could you first describe for me how you're using the program in your classroom? Well, we're writing to begin with. Um, we have daily writing assignments. And two or three times a week, we set aside 60 minutes for what I would call in-depth writing. Uh, and then on other days, I have them write three or four lines about something that they've done or something they've studied or something that they are studying. One or two nights a week, I send home a writing assignment that they prepare there and bring it back to me. So they do have a writing lesson? Oh, yes, twice weekly. Occasionally, we get three lessons in a week. And these are more formal and I use direct instruction on the writing process. On other days, it's more the approaches I just mentioned. Okay, well let me ask you, are you using the source book that the district passed out during the training session last summer? Yes, I find it very useful. It contains a lot of good ideas that I wouldn't come up with on my own. I can't say that I'm using it exactly the way that the district wants or in the same sequence, but it does contain a lot of ideas that I can pick and choose from. That's good. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the writing projects that you're doing? Are you gearing the students toward the domains that the source book talks about? Yes, definitely. We do some creative writing. At times there's a question as to how creative the writing is. But we have written some poetry, we've written some really short stories, and they have written descriptions to incorporate descriptive writing. I can't say that I claim to have covered all the domains or that we've thoroughly explored them. I guess that's an area where I need to be a little bit more systematic. But I do intend to cover them all before the end of the year. Are you doing any expository writing? Yes, definitely. Uh, that's, expository writing is useful to do in connection with social studies and science. For example, we've just finished covering the Civil War. So the students are writing a report on a topic that they chose. We've also written a couple of paragraphs on what it would be like to be a 12-year-old child during the Civil War. I can't say that we've achieved excellence in writing, but we are doing a lot of it, and the students have shown improvement this semester. Um, let me see, what do I have here? The rubrics, are you using the rubrics? Oh yes, I find them very helpful. I evaluate the writing regularly myself, but another teacher and I have made arrangements where we exchange writing assignments and we look at each other's students' work. That way, we use the rubric so that we might develop a greater consistency and I suppose you would say accuracy, and we hope fairness in the way that we assess the student's writing. It's taken some time, but we feel fairly rewarded that maybe we're doing a pretty good job of developing consistency in the way that we evaluate the student's writing using the rubric. And um, it also gives us an opportunity to talk about what we're teaching and to talk about this program. Do the students understand what the rubric is and how the criteria are used for evaluation? I have explained it to them and I have shared it with them. There's still some question as to how much they understand. <laughs> I think that they grasp more when the evaluations are favorable rather than when the evaluations are unfavorable. Human nature being as it is. <laughs> And the students are also learning to evaluate their own writing. Great. Thank you very much, Jorge. That gives me a good idea of how you're using the program, and I might say that you're using it quite well, given the amount of time we've been using it. Terry, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Writing for Competency program. Okay, that'd be fine. Are you using the program? Um, yeah, I went to a workshop like last August and they shared a source book with us and I've looked over it some and gotten some ideas from it so yeah I'd say I'm using the program. Okay. Are you doing anything else in your classroom around writing? Well in my class the students have always written a lot so I wouldn't say that I'm really doing anything that differently. Uh, I think I think more about writing now but uh, my students have always written a lot. So when you say writing a lot what do you mean? 
Well, I teach fourth grade, and at that period, we're teaching them to write descriptive paragraphs. So at that point, we're also working with their handwriting. So, of course, the best way to get them to work on their handwriting is to write. So how frequently would you say you do writing in your classroom? Oh, we write all the time. Um, as far as teaching formal writing lessons, um, I really don't have the time to do that as much as I'd like to because we have to work so many other things into the curriculum. But like if they're working on a social studies assignment, they'll write and you know they'll have a section where they're doing a lot of fill in the blank. And then it will say, now tell this in your own words or something like that. But as far as well, if you're asking me if I teach a lot of formal writing lessons, it's probably not very often, probably maybe two or three times a month. And do they keep any journal or notebook with writing activities in it, anything that they have to write in daily? No. Um, and you probably know how much pressure we're getting to really um, focus on reading and math this year. So what I do is I use writing as kind of something to fill in the edges. But we are so you're kind of... Well, our test scores were not good in reading and math, so we're really seeing a lot of pressure coming down for us to uh, really focus on that this year. Okay. So you do um, use writing when it's convenient or it's good to use writing. Right. Mm -hmm. How about in, in another subject area uh -huh. for some of the other subject areas that you're working with, like social studies? Right. And you do look at the source book. Do you use the source book as a guide, suggestions? I, yeah, occasionally. I keep the source book right there on my bookshelf. And occasionally, uh, when I'm getting to the point where I'm going to write like a new unit or something, I'll refer to it. And there have been one or two things that I've used from the source, source book, and that's where I got the idea. But then I just changed up the suggestions that I got from the source book. How about the idea of domains? I think they talk about the domains in the source book and, of course, during the training. Have you ever played with that or addressed writing projects to the domains? Well, by domain, do you mean letters and poems and essays, or are you talking about cognitive domain and affective domain? Well, I think they're all related, but it's uh, creative, sensory, descriptive, analytical. We you did know, talk about some So of they, that are the, they are the category, uh, different categories. Yeah. I remember we did go over that at the August workshop. Um, I don't use those words when talking to the fourth graders. That doesn't go very far. But, you know, I, um, I don't really do my lesson plans to specifically cover domains. Like we don't say this week we're working on domain three. But um, I think that in, in our classrooms we've always had a, a fairly good balance of different types of writing. Do you use any of the rubric evaluation systems that the source book suggests? You know, I would really like to learn more about that. I don't know if something happened in our session or what, but they showed us the procedure, but we weren't able to practice it at all. So I don't think it was just me. Um, when I left the training session, when we all did, I don't think there was, I, I don't think that I could have used the rubric right there to evaluate um, a piece of writing. You know, so I don't know if there was something in our session that... Yeah, I understand you've not used the rubric. I've been working with this uh, program for a while, and I think it has a lot to offer students if it's used in a structured way. And it might be that the rubrics are something that's transferable. Uh, the idea behind that, anyhow, is transferable to some of the uh, other subject areas that you might be working with because it presents to students a way of critiquing their own work as well as a way for you to critique their work. Uh, that way everybody knows what you're talking about and uh, what the criteria are. Yeah, and, and I would really like to learn more about that. In fact, I was, um, I was a little surprised that nothing else was done about it after that August workshop. Okay, well, I'll be glad to get you some information. And I think we might get a group of people together and just go through the rubrics and have them practice on each other's writing samples or their students' writing samples. Other people have mentioned to me that working with a group of other teachers has really helped them uh, use the rubrics in this writing program more effectively. Okay, yeah, that would be good. You know, I hope that there isn't something that I'm supposed to have been doing and haven't done this year. I, I really thought that that session was for us to get together and share ideas, and then if we found something useful, to do that. Yeah. Uh, what your goal is, is to uh, have student writing projects more frequently, and, but it is an, an informal goal. Yeah. And if it becomes more than an informal goal, then I think we need to be a little more clear about that. Yeah, I definitely would be more flexible with that. You know, I think that they need to set the priorities um, in terms of are we going to focus more on reading and math exclusively or almost exclusively, or do we want to offer, um, I don't know, a more broad curriculum?
I, I don't know, but I'd certainly be more flexible about that. Okay, well that's good. Thanks, Terry, and I'll check on doing something with the rubrics and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, thanks. I look forward to that.